Hello everyone. I am delighted to be speaking to you today. My name is Andrea Hales and I'm the Director English of the British Council in Taiwan. The British Council specialises in creating cultural and educational opportunities around the world between the UK and other countries. And one of our ways of working is to partner with governments to provide access to English language training courses. So today I'm going to share with you our experience of creating English language learning programmes for busy civil servants, looking at the key considerations and lessons learned from around the world. I will discuss what makes an effective language learning programme, including the importance of having a long term commitment to learning through the effective benchmarking of current English abilities within the civil service and setting realistic timelines for progress. I will also discuss how to create opportunities to use English in stress-free settings and develop a culture where English learning becomes a habit. I will draw on the lessons learned and challenges faced from different parts of the world with a particular focus on Asia and Europe. A key driver for success in obtaining a new skill, such as a language, is to have a clear purpose and goal for its acquisition. This helps create intrinsic motivation and willingness to engage in study, especially for participants, such as civil servants, who we know are time poor and who have limited time within their busy schedules. Currently in Taiwan, there exists a very clear purpose for civil servants to learn English with the 2030 Blueprint for Developing a Bilingual Nation, which aims to cultivate English language proficiency. This is an ambitious goal, which will equip people in Taiwan with the English language skills needed to participate confidently on the world stage, where English is a current lingua franca used for international diplomacy and business. This aim to cultivate Taiwan's English language proficiency also connects clearly with one of the British Council's key aims, which is to create a more widespread and better knowledge of English. The British Council has worked with many civil services around the world to facilitate their English language development, including, to name only a few, Thailand, Ukraine, Spain, Singapore, Indonesia, Myanmar and Japan. From these experiences, the single most important success factor that has been cited as fundamental to the long term success of their development is the understanding that a long term commitment to learning success is required. For anywhere with bilingual ambitions, it is important to keep in mind that there is no quick fix if real English learning progress is to be made. This table shows the suggested hours required to progress up the proficiency levels with guided learning. Countries that have had the most success, and we think here about countries in Asia such as Thailand, Singapore and Malaysia, what the various ministries and departments in these countries made was a real commitment to the learning of their civil servants over many years. They have understood the need for long term programmes of English language development in order to see real progress within their civil service ranks. The countries that have had less success are those that have taken a more short term view, engaging in short language programmes over a few days or weeks. Although, although these programmes may be repeated every year, they are not consistent enough for participants to make any real progress up a proficiency level. This is especially true for participants who are at the beginning levels of proficiency. As well as understanding that it takes time and requires a consistent approach to learning, the civil services in countries which have had the most success have also recognised that learning needs to be built into the structure of their civil servants week, but with a balance between both the work time and personal time used. 
For the learning to be truly engaging and sustainable long term, part of a civil servant's time spent learning should happen during their working hours. However, we know that it can be a real challenge to find the time to build learning into an already busy day. An example of where this has worked very well is in Ukraine, where the British Council has been developing comprehensive English language training programmes since 2012 across all level of Ukraine civil service ranks. To date, we have taught nearly 3,000 civil servants, including from the Ministries of Justice, International Affairs, Economic Development, Finance, Education and Culture. These programmes were tailored to the specific needs of each group, with each course between 120 to 160 hours. The courses focused focused on communicative ability, enabling the participants to speak more fluently and confidently with their counterparts in other countries. The courses also prepared them to be able to share policy information and to set up mutually beneficial exchanges. It also increased the participants effectiveness in accessing and making use of relevant international information commonly available in English to benefit ways of working and practices within Ukraine. To ensure effective engagement and participation on the courses, time in their busy workday was given to the civil servants to participate. For example, the participating ministries agreed that of the two hours of teacher-led study a week, one hour was done in work time and one hour was done in the participants' own time. Therefore, if work started, for example, at 9 a.m., classes would run from 8 to 10 a.m. Or if work finished at 6 p.m., classes would run from 5 to 7 p.m. This meant that one hour from each two hour class was from work time and one hour was from personal time. This helped to demonstrate commitment from both the side of the employer and also commitment from the employee. For a learning programme to be truly successful and for civil servants to really engage in it, there needs to be mutual commitment from both sides. Therefore, I really believe the time needed and subsequently the time given to learning a language cannot be underestimated. The civil services which have had the least success with English language learning are those which have failed to fully realise this and not considered how to build it into the busy schedules of their civil servants. It is the goal of most civil services around the world, I think, that their civil servants can represent them confidently in English on the world stage. And with the acknowledgement that time is needed to develop the language skills required for international cooperation, it then brings me on to my next point. When there is an agreement that a realistic time frame is needed for learning, there comes, quite rightly, the expectation to see measurable progress of the civil servant's English ability. It is important, therefore, that a comprehensive English learning programme is developed with a clear understanding of the short, medium and long term English language goals needed across all ranks within the civil service. As Joanna has mentioned in her talk, this requires a solid needs analysis and understanding of the current levels of English to help develop a civil servant specific comprehensive learning system. By effectively benchmarking current levels of language ability within the civil service, we are then able to set realistic timelines and goals for progress and to effectively measure the learning progress at different stages as the program is delivered. This then allows learning programmes to be developed which can incorporate different flexible teaching and assessment elements, including face-to-face teacher-led classes, online teacher-led classes and self-access learning. Being able to demonstrably show progress is not only important for the employer, but for the employee themselves they need to be able to actively measure their own progress and be able to demonstrate it practically within their day-to-day -day work. 
In Thailand, for example, the British Council worked with Thailand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs to develop a comprehensive learning plan to support the development of English language skills for civil servants wanting to take part in the United Nations peacekeeping missions around the world. This programme was delivered over seven years from 2013 to 2019 and supported English proficiency through an integrated programme of face-to-face -face and online teaching. Each participant's level was benchmarked at the beginning of the programme and again at the end to show their progress. They also had short practical assessments in the form of role plays, presentations and simulated meetings to showcase and measure their progress as the course progressed. In addition to this, the programme also supported the continued learning of English through the development of a self-access English Learning Centre at Thailand's Peace Operations Centre in Bangkok. The development of this strong internal learning infrastructure and commitment to learning really helped make the programme a success. The next point I'd like to talk about is the importance of creating opportunities within Taiwan for civil servants to communicate in English in a low stress and engaging way. These opportunities are in addition to the more formal structured programmes of study and allow civil servants to practise what they have studied to help their confidence and fluency. For example, we are currently running face-to-face teacher-led classes for the Ministry of Education in Taiwan. And as part of this programme, the British Council and the Ministry of Education in Taiwan held its first English networking event with colleagues from the British Council and from the Ministry coming together for an afternoon of fun activities and discussions in English. This was the first in a series of networking events to provide staff from the Ministry of Education with an opportunity to use their English skills and build their fluency and confidence. These type of, ev of events are a fantastic way to cultivate English communicative competence and are also a lot of fun. Many civil servant ministries and departments we have worked with around the world have created their own internal opportunities for staff to use their English in more relaxed settings as part of their comprehensive learning system. One popular example is setting up English lunchtime clubs where colleagues in the same office or building get together one lunchtime a week for 30 minutes to practice speaking together on a range of different topics. They advertise the day and time on internal channels and bring lunch. It is a great way to not only meet different colleagues, but also to chat and learn new things together. Mixed levels can learn from each other, and it is a stress-free way to give staff the opportunity to speak in English with no fear or worry about making mistakes. Many staff feel shy to speak to their colleagues in English. However, the more they do interact in English, the more confident they will feel. The key is just to talk, which in turn begins to build communicative fluency and confidence. These skills can then be transferred into the work environment and help staff feel more ready to engage in English with international ministries, organisations and partners. Another way to create stress-free settings is to have an online platform where only English is used to discuss topic of interest. This is a great way to practice and can be set up internally. There are also many online communities around the world that use English on every possible type of topic or hobby. Encouraging staff to join these also enables people to engage in an all English environment internationally and interact with many different people from around the world. Developing new vocabulary in English on a topic or hobby that you are familiar with in your own language is less daunting than in an unfamiliar topic. It also helps develop confidence and fluency in communicative language skills, 
such as sharing ideas, agreeing and disagreeing with others' opinions, and in giving one's own opinion, all of which are important language skills in English, which can be transferred into the workplace. The British Council itself has an active online community on its public website, Learn English, which is free to anyone to join, and where participants can watch videos, read articles, listen to podcasts, and leave comments for other participants. Given the demands of their roles, civil servants can often be time poor, so opportunities to build learning into daily routines in short, manageable chunks of time is also very important. In this way, English learning becomes a routine, like brushing your teeth. This is the little and often learning mindset. Consistent learning, as little as 15 minutes a day, can have an enormous impact over the course of a year. By studying for 15 minutes each day, a person can achieve over 90 hours in a year. Just think how much progress can be made in that time. The British Council has developed many free resources to help make it easier to build English learning into the daily lives of busy civil servants. Our Learn English web resources offer an extensive range of short activities for all levels of learner, and using these are a great way to spend a short time each day on particular skills, vocabulary or grammar development. Our free learning apps or podcasts are ideal to use on the MRT, to and work, to and from work, for example, for a quick 15 minutes each lunchtime or before going to bed. A total of 110 million people used our English le learning websites in 2020 to 2021 to help support them with their English language learning. So little and often really is the key. And on that note, my 15 minutes is up. So I would like to thank you all for your time today. And I will now hand over to you for any questions. Thank you.